Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Tag, meine Freunde, willkommen auf dem wilden Gefahrten of the Sturmwolf, flying, shooten, carrier, person, transporten, gefahrten mit the flying and the shooting and the dropping of the people. Ja, everyone is Fox from Model Making Guru here. I don't know where I'm going with that. I just like to be silly. Welcome to episode 5 of the Games Workshop Space Wolves Stormwolf Brackets, a Stormfang variant brackets, which I have realized it's not a gunship it's actually an assault carrier or an assault craft or something like that because it has dudes in it so i keep calling it a gunship and it's not i've changed the titles on the videos but it still says that on the caption card so never mind never mind anyway how are you doing welcome to part five if you remember in the last part we got all the base colors down and it's looking pretty kick-ass now remember as always it looks a bit more blue on telly than it does in real life it's not quite as deep blue as that it's a lot more faded bluey gray so yeah so what is next where are we up to well we can't get the pilot out yet we can't unleash him got lots to do uh next up is we've got to paint all the little colored details uh, but not the golds and shinies just the bits and bobs so the yellow patches here and there uh, blacks probably the metallics because they're going to get a normal oil wash anyway so they'll go matte so they'll be able to go under a matte coat. Uh, the sponsons on the side, you've got the matte and the metals on there. Uh, the runes, you might be able to do those because they can go matte, they don't need to be shiny. So you might be able to get those done. And obviously all, all the bits on here, but none of the shinies, none of the golds or anything like that. Uh, because then what we need to do, once all that's done, we need to do the weatherings or the initial weatherings that would just affect the paint. So. Without further ado, I'll have a think about the runes. I'm not sure. I'm dreading that bit. I've no idea how I'm going to do that. We'll go and crack on. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the yellows. And I've decided I am going to paint the schnoz yellow. I'm going to leave this bit in the middle because it's kick-ass. But I'm going to paint the schnoz yellow and make it look worn. And we're going to go for that Star Wars look where you have the base colour and then another colour on top. And then you chip the top colour away to reveal the base colour. It's just how weathering works in the Star Wars universe. And I think it's quite cool. So we're going to try that. Now, because my airbrush is balked and I have no needle, because I'm an idiot, uh, I'm going to brush paint this. So I'm going to thin the paints a little for the smoothest possible finish. It won't be as beautiful as the one that's on there already, but it will be fine. It'll be fine to your eyes of looking. So I'm going to do this bit. I'm going to paint this bit. Obvs. I might paint this bit as well. Um, and I'll probably have to paint these bits around the sides of the engine, get them done. I'm not sure what else I'll paint yellow then, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm going to get everything ready and we'll crack on with the yellow. Actually, no, stop. Haha, -ha. wait. Haha, -ha. no. First, before we do that, <laughs> God, I'm talking rubbish. Before we do that, we need to do some dry brushing. We need to get this edge definition going on. Now, Games Workshop would have you do lots of edge highlights. I can't do edge highlights. I suck at edge highlights. So, what I'm going to do is just get my old dry brush and I'm going to get my uh, Fenrisian Grey. Now, because this came out quite dark compared to Fenrisian grey it still works as a highlight colour so we're just going to basically dry brush over everything just a little tiny bit to get some edge definition so let me go and get everything ready and we'll do that first knocking it we'll do that first and then we'll do the yellow because I don't plan these things I just make this stuff up as I go along you know how it works you know how it works <sighs> more coffee Okay, so this dry brushing step, we've got our dry brushing brush. I've got a little bit of the Fenrisian grey on there. Not much, tiny amount. And all I'm going to do is start brushing it over edges. Now, for a lot of it, or for some of it, it won't be particularly visible. Because it may blend into the background colour. We're just using the colour we used before. But for some of it, where it's darker, it will actually stand out. And it carries out the same sort of function as an edge highlight. It's just, I can't do edge highlights. I really can't. I've tried and I suck at it royally. So what I'm doing is going around and you've really got almost no paint on the brush at all here. Really barest of bare minimums. So it may take a while. So just take your time, 
go around. I'm doing this bit, but it's going to be gold, so I don't know why. Uh, I don't need to do this bit because it's going to be yellow, but I'll do here because this won't. You can see there, little little highlight comes out. And what it also does is it also fades a little bit around the flatter surfaces. So you do get a little bit of fading here and there. It just helps to blend all the colours together even more. So just work your way around. Okay, and with that now done, you can see it's not made a massive difference, but it's there, you can see it. It just makes the edges pop a little bit. So quite nice. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is step step words words. The next step is we need to do the yellows. So for this, we're going to use Avaland Sunset. I've got some on my wet palette, thinned with a little tiny bit of water, and we're going to paint selected areas. So like this recess here, the schnoz, the cowlings around the engines. And all we're going to do is go straight in and paint these. Now it is a base paint, so it should give good coverage, but you may need more than one coat. I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. So just work your way around slowly. Don't worry about the opacity of the colour, just focus more on getting a nice, neat, smooth paint job. And try not to go up the edges of the blue bits here, try and be very neat if you can. And we are going to do some pin washes later, so it's not a biggie if you don't go right up to the edge. Okay, so that's now the yellow all done. Two sides, the schnoz and the engine cowlings. Now, if you're wondering how I got the paint down this side of the engine cowling, because it's a nightmare to get down there. Very special trick. I use this brush, this brush, which is a, a fine line or detailing brush. But a really nice point on it, if you lick it. And that's great for getting down into little recesses and crevices. Creviche. Getting the brush in there and just dragging it up. Took a little while, but I got there in the end. Uh, it actually took about three coats of this. A uh, reasonably thick coat, still watered down, so not like you know pure paint. Uh, a thick coat and then a couple of slightly thinner coats just to pad out the colour. So that is now done. Now, what's next? Well, we want to make this yellow look a bit less like it's just rolled off the factory floor. And there's a million ways you could do this. It is going to have weathering and chipping and stuff on top. But one thing we can do is try and fade it a little bit. Uh, you could do this with paints, you could do it with dry brushing, but I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite the bullet, I'm gonna take a big risk. I'm gonna do it with a sanding stick. Uh, this will serve two purposes. One, it will smooth the surface, because it's brushed anyway. So it will smooth the surface uh, to make it look a bit more flat, but also if I'm very, very careful, it might just thin it a little bit in places and it'll start to be look a bit patchy and also some of the blue or the gray underneath might start to show through. So you have to be super careful with this. I've got a um, UMP squishy stick. I've got a big fat one as well. These are quite old, so they're not particularly coarse. They're very, very fine. And all I'm gonna do is it's the nervous moment. All I'm gonna do is just start gently working on it. Now I'm putting no pressure on this at all. And it might take a while before you even see anything. But what you should hopefully see, like on there on the edge, it started to pull the paint off and you've got that gray line there. Now we're gonna do a little edge highlight over these or some chipping and stuff with a lighter yellow anyway. So it's not the end of the world that bit. But what you can do is just start to sand away some of this. It might not do it while I'm doing it here on camera. It might take too long, but this is all you need to do. Just start sanding very carefully and try and do it in patches and use circular motions and just try and fade that away. And we'll see how that comes out. So I'll get this done and we'll see what happens. It's very nerve wracking. Okay, and with that gentle sanding done, you can see it's now given it a slightly more used look. Got some dark patches there, and the, the edges here are now dark. Now, as I say, don't worry about those. We're going to do some stuff with the edges later with the chipping. Also got some paint taken off on the edges here, and it looks a bit more grubby and dirty. Uh, so one last thing we want to do to the yellow is a quick dry brush. I have mixed in some of the Avalon Sunset with some Screaming Skull, and we're going to dry brush this, and we're going to use two brushes. 
we're going to use if I can find the other one where is the other one we're going to use a small and a medium dry brush small for around the engines and the little side panels and the medium one for everything else so what we're going to do is always take a little bit of paint not too much a small 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 amount on the brush on the big brush get most of it off on the tissue which you can't see because you can't see it and I want almost nothing on here almost nothing now I've masked off around the edges here to keep things neat and all we're going to do is just dry brush and I'm going to try and fade it from the back end I want to just very lightly start picking out some areas and I'll try and get it over the edges first just to get the paint moving but then I'll also build it up in more broader strokes and this is really just to try and fade it and give it some more fading now when you dry brushing like this you can use little circular motions this is on camera little circular motions and that just helps give you a more subtle fade so I'll just work on this if I can orient my hands in a way to make that cool and it's kind of just giving a slight sun faded look I've got almost nothing on here at all so it's very very subtle but it will build up very slowly you could use just white or something like that if you want an extreme difference but I just wanted something subtle so I'll just go around and do the rest and we'll do the same on the engines as well and on the little small panels okay so with that done hopefully now you can see it looks a bit more weathered and worn and fits in with the rest of the ship quite nicely uh, I just wanted to show that method because just to show you can you can do it without an airbrush get this kind of faded effect it's not exactly the same and sort of soft and smooth as the rest of the blending we did with the with the airbrush but it's it's not bad and you're going to weather over the top and it's going to be covered up anyway so any little bits where it's not quite a subtle blend will all be blended in and faded away with the weathering that goes over the top so that's looking cool what's next <sighs> it's the bit I've been dreading it's the dreaded triangles now Duncan would have you do little lines on here to mark out a triangle and then paint them in and then not screw it up and it all looks fantastic yeah I can't do that I'm, I'm not going to do that I'm going to show you an easier way of doing the triangles and I'm not going to do triangles all the way around because I, I just have no desire to do that I will just mess it up so what I'm going to do is just triangles on every corner there 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 so four on each engine and all I'm going to do is dead simple I'm going to mark a middle point here with a pencil soft pencil all I'm going to do is just draw a joining line avec le pencil make sure it all looks pretty good to my eye my eye everyone looks equal in my eye so we've got our line there the beauty of using a pencil is if you go wrong you can just very gently rub it out and then it's just a case of painting them so I'm going to paint these with some Abaddon black so let me get a little fine brush where's my little fine brush uh, I'm going to use I, f I forgot I had another Winder and Newton series 7 brush I've got a double O yeah it's a bit bigger than the triple O so I'm going to get a little bit of water on the brush just a tiny amount just mix that in with the paint so it's not quite so solid the Abaddon black is like when you if you do it straight from the pot it's just really stodgy and horrible if you thin it it goes super thin super fast so there's no sort of happy middle ground so I've now got that line to work on as a guide so I can draw a line in there now if I do go wrong let's get some water in that if I do go wrong horribly wrong then yes I can repaint the yellow I'd have to redo the dry brushing a little bit as well to make it not be so clean so I'll just do that there go down there we go and then I just need to slowly fill that in so I'm good this is quite thin now I, I mix the paint a little thinner than normal when I'm doing the straight lines just so that if I do have to cover it up it's not a big solid black mark that the yellow has needs about 13 coats to cover so mark it out in pencil first get a bit of thin black paint just to draw the lines and then it's just coloring in times and I hope all that was in focus yeah Abaddon black it's either super super thin or it's far too thick and there's no happy middle ground so you might need to do a number of coats let's say now I could use a bigger brush than this but when I'm painting like this with my elbows on the desk upright 
I have to be super, super careful because I'm not that good at it. Handy tip, by the way. Uh, if you've never tried painting with your arms up in the air like this and elbows on the desk, do it. It's actually better for your back. I Traditionally, I paint hunched over the desk. Um, I actually, for some reason, tend to take the, the model off the desk and have it over my knee, which usually ends up with small parts falling off and going all over the place. Uh, but yeah, if you if you try and get used to painting like this, I'm finding it actually quite interesting. It's not easy because I, I really need to be close up. But it's good for your back. This is a slow process. Anyway, I'll shut up now. We'll do the crossfade bit in a second. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's the triangles done. It's looking pretty spanky, if I do say so myself. Uh, while I had the Abaddon black out, I took the liberty of painting all the black parts on things like the sponsons and everywhere else that needed painting black. The only bits I haven't painted yet are the cowlings over these uh, guns because I need to have a metallic bit in the middle, so I'll do the metallic colour on them first and then the black. So I've left them for now. So what is next? Next is the lead belcher. Uh, we have some metallic parts that we're going to paint some of the metallic parts i'm not going to paint till much later um, because i want them to stay shiny so once everything's been matte varnished and just the shiny things like the gold we'll do some of the metallics then but uh, initially we're going to do the intakes the thrusters at the back uh, the guns here and the repulsor bit repulsor drive bit here uh, in lead belcher because what we'll do is we'll do lead belcher and then we'll do a wash of either agrax earth shade or null oil not decided yet and then they can be matte varnished over and then the shine can be brought back to them later once the uh, matte coat has gone on and we're doing some other last bits and bobs like the gold so yep so we're gonna i'm not gonna do the thrusters under here because i'm gonna do them in dual aluminium because i want them to be shiny shiny right from the start i want them to be different to these thrusters so we'll do those later with the durable minimum minimum durable moving after the matte coat's gone on. So this I'm just kind of planning these things ahead now. So what we need is we need the lead belcher, which I have in my palette of palettes. Uh, a little bit of water in there would be quite nice. Um, quite simply, we're just going to start painting this on uh, onto all the parts I want to do it on. So for example, the engines is where we're going to paint these. Uh, so just basically layer it on. You need one coat. One coat should be enough. Although if you see any of the undercoat coming through, obviously. Wow, I'm doing the Duncan thing again. If you see any of the undercoat coming through, do another layer. Put some more paint on the brush. Yeah, I need to not... It's really hard not to say things that he says. I'm going to have to be careful where they go into the cowling, though, because I need to make sure I don't get it on the cowling. Touching up the cowling at this point is a bit of a chore. Because it's not... Any paint on the brush. There's no paint on the brush. Because it's not just a standard colour. It's not just, you know, the fan and rust grey or anything like that. Ow. Uh, it's kind of all shades, so it's really hard to match it. So I'm trying to avoid going on there as much as possible. So I'll just go around and do all the metal parts. That was a bit thin. Might need two coats. Not necessarily thick coats. Okay, pause, quick update. I'm in the middle of painting all the metally bits. Two things I wanted to point out. First and foremost, I may have solved the dark desk problem. Uh, in the first couple of videos, everything was really dark. I figured out in the end, and that, that's why I was sort of starting to film with the thing up in the air with a white backdrop, because it was where I got the best lighting. I figured out it's the green cutting mat that's causing all my problems. It adjusts all the, the, the camera just adjust the color and it looks really dark and I have to fart around with it so I remembered I've got one of these old Citadel uh, work sort of temporary little work painting station thing little plastic tray basically with slots for paints and a slot for two slots for water pots and places to put my brushes so I painted it gray Tamiya gray uh, I, guess, I can't remember which one it was now neutral gray or something like that it's a, a Tamiya rattle cam painted it gray and now with a white cutting mat as well when I'm taking a picture the color balance isn't all screwed up so everything's nice and bright it's a little overexposed in my hands but i think i fixed it so I expect to see a lot more of stuff happening on this mat in future videos because it's better than the green desktop i could just paint my cutting mat the same color but it wouldn't be the same so i've still got the backdrop there the white one which is reflecting light and i've still got my light shining down it's a bit of shadow but it looks much better anyway just wanted to point that out just out of curiosity now more importantly 
this is one of my brushes this is my base small base brush and it's been in my pile of yeah, it's gone a bit shonky so i don't really use it much apart from hard stuff you know, rough stuff i wanted to show you something let me zoom in let me zoom in let me move that out of the way so you can see right if you look carefully you can see hopefully just make sure that's in focus you can see that this brush has developed a little hook right on the end it hooks across like that it goes bzzz. and i was like oh, that's rubbish can't use that now it's supposed to be a nice pointy end don't throw a brush away if it does a hook on the end i'll tell you for why because this has gone from being a base brush for doing big massive blocks of colors or reasonably large blocks of colors to a fine detail brush this has basically become like an artificer what happened i realized as i was painting with it i had to paint a little detail and what i realized was well, you've got a big fat brush that can hold a lot of paint but the actual pointy bit is hooked and if you when you're painting if you angle it so the hook is the only bit that touches the piece you can paint super super fine details with a big massive brush which means it holds more paint than your artificers or my Winsor and newton series 7. so if i'm doing like quick edge highlights and things i can just go and do loads of them so if you've got a brush like this even a big massive one and you've got a little tiny hook on the end don't throw it away keep it as a detailing brush i've just been working on these and i was painting these little white tick marks here uh what else was i painting i was painting these tick marks uh, and some of the sides of the metal bits here and some little details all over the ship uh, and i'd suddenly realized it was absolutely brilliant for that for little tiny details so if you get a brush and it does that on the end and hooks it keep it and treasure it i'm going to treasure this now it's going to be it's got a little mark on it saying tip hook not like the freight company just so i know it's, it's a good brush and it can go into my good pile of essential brushes so when i've got lots of areas to paint tiny details i'm not going to use my series 7 that doesn't hold much paint that will come in handy if i wanted to paint one of these little ticks one of those if i've got loads of them to paint or if i'm doing paint chipping i might just use this because you can hold it from a distance and you can just go and you can paint little things so there you go don't throw a brush away if it gets a hook on the end if it's supposed to be pointed it's still super useful anyway i'll go finish off the metallics uh and then when we've done the metallics i think there's just one last little thing to paint i can't remember what it is somewhere somewhere i'll find it anyway we've got to do the normal wash and there's some other bits so i'll go and do that I'm back in a moment okay so the metallics are all now done you can see i've done the uh, thrusters at the back and the intakes here just painted with the lead beltra uh, the two cannons on the front we've got the repulsor panels whatever you want to call those fuel generators maybe a um, couple of bits on the back i painted these two little rivet things as well and what i also did was just in a few places i very very gently dry brushed the lead belcher on like this intake grill here just with a normal brush my normal base brush got most of the paint off and just ran it along just to pick out the edges and there's one there of the grill and also i don't know if you'll see it at this angle but also this grill here under the schnoz uh, now while i was doing this if you're following along don't worry too much if you're not 100 percent neat like for example if you're painting these plates here if a bit you get a little bit of a slip just a tiny tiny slip of the brush don't worry too much you can go back and clean it up you can go back and touch in the blue again but because you've got all variations of blue it might be more difficult than you think but don't worry too much because once this gets a wash of a uh, shade it'll kind of go along the edges anyway and tidy it up because it'll darken the edge between the blue and the silver so i always say if you've doing like two panels where they join together and you're just a little tiny bit off don't worry your shade or your pin wash or your panel line wash will fix everything this yellow bit here i managed to get it quite right but there are just like microscopic gaps along the edge i just freehanded it there are little microscopic gaps where you can see the blue underneath but it's no biggie because when i put a pin wash through here it's going to fill in that panel line and also soak up a little bit to the side and it will just hide those so don't worry too much if you've not got the, you know a mathematically straight line it's fine so that is done i also went ahead and did a couple of other bits i forgot to point out and when i did the uh, the black parts uh, i did the bolters on the sides i didn't paint the metal parts i just painted the the two black parts i painted the whole thing because it's easier so the uh, the sponsors have those bits painted with the abaddon black uh, i also painted the hell frost cannon things on top 
they were painted uh, with Abaddon black all over and then I just picked out the muzzle and the little sort of strips underneath with the lead beltra. Uh, now what I'll need to do is paint this part gold and put the runes on there but I can't do that yet because I want to do that once everything's been matte varnished and weathered because I want the gold to stay shiny so that's as far as those can go at the moment they can't go any further because there's no other colors for me to put on there um, I could do the blue glowy stuff but I'll do the gold first because there's no point doing that and then go and trying to get the gold in without messing up the blue the glazes I'll have to do so we'll do the blue glowy pipes and the runes once we've done the gold so they go to one side and also on the bit that those guns go on uh, I did a couple of little details you'll see on the main ship here uh, this little tick mark here there's some here and there's a couple of others around it and also this panel on the back and this little bit there that little piece there uh, all they are is I just picked those out with a bit of screaming skull just very little as a little highlight color just just to make some difference to break things up a little bit there's no reason to it I just decided to break up the surface a little bit so you've got those two there you've got one on the side here uh, it just makes things a little more interesting now what I did do is on the guns here these covers these cowlings are supposed to be black I decided not to bother with black I actually went in with uh, eshin grey uh, because like most things I want them to look dark but I don't want them to just be painted black because then I can't do anything with it so what I'm going to do is the painted ashen grey and then when the null null goes over the metallics of course it'll darken that down and then I can get some shading effect on them without me having to necessarily dry brush or edge highlight so that's that done I don't think there's anything else oh the only other one thing I painted was this little bit here for no reason whatsoever just I thought you know what let's just paint this a funky colour and all I did was I mixed a bit of Calador Sky which is a brilliant blue colour with a bit of the Screaming Skull a uh, little bit of each and just made that kind of nice turquoise colour so I just painted that bit of cowling for no reason at all I'm just having fun with it I'm just making stuff up okay so with that there's nothing more to actually show you on here apart from the next step which is a null null wash uh, once that's done there's nothing else for me to paint on here uh, that I can do before we do all the weathering. Uh, there are the little mascots on the sides. Uh, now these are going to be like bone and fur coloured. This one I might make gold, but they got, they're on a gold base uh, and I'll need to paint the gold base before I can paint the details. There's no point trying to paint the skull and the fur and then go in and try and paint the gold once that's on there because I'll just make a mess of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these till everything else is done and we're painting the gold parts. Just paint them all gold, then I can paint the fur and everything else on. So there's nothing else for me to show you on here because there's nothing else for me to paint right now. So the last thing is just a coat of null oil on these metallic parts. And this, as always, couldn't be easier. Just remember to shake, 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 shake your null oil. Shake your shade because if you don't, it'll come out glossy and that'll be sadness. Let me move these out of there. I may as well film this down here. I've just done that a bit. There's no point lifting it up and changing the camera. Um, so what we're going to do with this is get our Norm Oil and get ourselves a nice brush for the shade. If I can find my brush of shade, uh, that will do. And it's quite simple. We're just going to do a Norm Oil wash. So as always, get some on your brush. A big brush is better. So uh, what's this one? This is a, a, this is a medium shade brush. And all I'm going to do is, as we've done with the other shades, just very carefully brush this over. I'm not pushing down on the brush, I'm letting the brush tell the shade where to go. And I'm just letting it collect around the edges, but I don't want it to pull up. So I'm gonna keep it moving around. And what I will do is in a second, I'll turn this over and I'll go up underneath the, the, uh, the gun. So we've got to do these parts on the engines at the back. We obviously have to give these a wash actually there is another step after this I've totally lied to you so once we've done this we'll do the next step so go around your engines get it in all the creases and also get it around the edge where it meets the the blue of the ship again when I was saying before about if you've got little wiggles in your paint lines and stuff don't worry it's not easy painting around there and even I've got a few joke jonk shonky bits well, I can't talk again today a few shonky bits so don't worry too much the null oil will get between the blue and the silver and clean that up so I'm just going to go around now and add all this null oil. <sighs> 
seriously, this is about take 12 of this bit. <sighs> it's late at night. I'm tired. Uh, I've got a little bit of a headache. And I've not had enough coffee. And I keep fluffing up my lines. And it's not like I even script this. This is all off the cuff. So how I can mess up lines I've not even written. I don't know. Anyway, let's get a swig of coffee and try this again, shall we? And I'm not kidding. This is about take 12. I am truly test -bech. Right. Where are we up to? Well, all the shades have dried. We have one coat of the normal on the rear thrusters, the engine thrusters, uh, and the two little thrusters on the back, and that little bit there. So one coat, and they look pretty crappy now, but they're supposed to. That's what it's supposed to look like. It kind of looks like an X-Wing, if an X-Wing had, like, tiny wings that were in the wrong place, and only one wing, and... Yeah, anyway, moving on. We have uh, one coat of normal on the twin link Laz Melter pulse thrust gun ch the shooty death tubes i don't i don't know what they are you know me I, I i don't know the story and the law and the tech i just think they look cool that's why i make them i think they're twin link glass cannons anyway i'm probably wrong uh so they had uh, one coat the intakes had one coat of the normal oil and when i did these i was careful to make sure that i got my brush and i pushed it right into the join between the cowling and the edge of the the uh, the circle here so that little 90 degree edge between the the wall here this part and this whatever you want to call that the fairing around the intake so that the null mile went into the little 90 degree corner and made a, a sort of faded dark line around it and that's what i was saying about not being particularly worried about having little tiny paint wobbles when you do that and a shade or a pin wash goes in there it covers a multitude of sins, so don't worry too much. Your shade or your pin wash will save you from that. Uh, now on the graph plating, whatever you're going to call it, the repulsor plating, I don't quite know what it's called, um, I went slightly different. I did one coat of the null oil, as you can see. That went around all the edges uh, and settled itself in around the edges and made it look all dirty and dark. Uh, but then I added an extra thing. I added a coat of three parts Lamian medium to one part uh, Agrax Earth Shade. Now, if you remember, Lamian Medium is the colourless shade. It's basically it's their it's their shade medium with no pigment in it, so it's just clear and colourless. You can use it as a matte coat if you want to. Um, three brushfuls of the Lamian Medium, one brushful of Agrax Earth Shade. The reason I did this was a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to give it a slightly different tone to the rest of the metallics. It's got a slight brown tinge to it. The reason I thinned it is I didn't want it to be too extreme. Agrax Earth Shade can be quite dark, and this would just look brown. Now, you can thin them with water, however, the way the shades work is they've got acrylic binders in there that make them behave in a certain way, so they, they collect around edges and they don't just rip apart through surface tension. That's how they do what they do. They collect in recesses, but they still tint the surface. If you thin it with water, those um, acrylic binding agents break down. They just, they just dissolve away because you, you're thinning it all out. If you use Lamian Medium, uh, you're basically just adding more of the acrylic binding medium to the shade but you're increasing the amount of binding medium which is clunk which is the the clear stuff with the shade so you're having less shade for more actual liquid so you're thinning it but you're not changing how it works duncan never explains that he just says it maintains the properties of the shade basically means the binding agents that make it flow the certain way are just more in relation to the color so you're just increasing the amount of actual carrier while reducing the amount of colour in there. So it's a good way to thin your shades, but make sure they stay exactly the same, behave exactly the same. So that, when I did that, it collected around the edges, it tinted it a little bit, but importantly it collected around the edges. And then when it dried, it just gives a nice fade between the metallic and the blue in the background. It, it toned down the black, because the black was quite stark. The black sort of outline on the edges was quite stark. The brown just helps fade it even more and blend it a bit more. So that looks nice and scrubby now and horrible. Um, so there's really one last thing to do. Uh, I'm not going to do anything on the guns. What I'm going to do now, I'll show you, but I'm not going to do it on the guns because I've got a different plan for the guns. So, But there's one thing left to do now um, before we start actual weathering type stuff. And that is to do a little bit of dry brushing with our good old friend, Necron Compound. Remember, this is the silver dry brush paint, which I must get some more of because there's almost none left. Uh, the point of this, this obviously is going to get a, a matte coat before we start all the gold so anything i paint on the on the silver bits now is going to be matted down that's fine i'm not aiming to get shiny metallics right now what i'm aiming to do is make them go from looking like this to looking 
brighter but not necessarily shiny. I'm just trying to tone down this so it's more of a recessed shade. It looks more metallic with dirt and grime. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dry brush it. I've got a couple of brushes. My What's that one? That's a medium dry brush and I've got this one, small dry brush, but I've also got uh, somewhere. It's gone. I've lost it. I had somewhere. There it is. There it is. There it is. Knock the camera. Sorry. Chisel brush. That's good for getting around tight corners. Uh, so that's a base brush, but we use it as a dry brush. So what I'm going to do is take my Necronicus Compoundium, get some on the brush. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I'll rub most of it off on the tissue. You know how dry brushing works. And my aim here is not to replace everything and not just to do an edge highlight. It's a bit of both. I want to, and I hope this comes out on camera and I'm in focus. I want to get the edges, but I also want to lighten it. But the idea is, especially on these flat areas, when you do this, it will give you an edge highlight. It will lighten everything and blend it all together, but it will also give you this slight patchy effect because there'll be some bits where the, the, the paint doesn't take. And that will have still the slightly sort of dark or dull texture to it from the shades. So the idea is, if there's like a little dip in the plastic, the brush won't get the paint in there and you'll have this naturally tarnished slightly dirty metal look so it's a bit like an edge highlight with a little bit of blending on the surface like we did on the yellow really similar kind of principle you just kind of put color it a little bit without making it completely new color so you can see there you've got this kind of clean look on the edges and it's a bit cleaner compared to say that it's a bit cleaner, but where the paint hasn't caught up here, you've got this little sort of dark patch. It just looks more like used tarnished metal. So I'm going to go around all of these and all the engines and everything else. And on the engines, I'll try and make it more like a, the shade will turn more into a recess shade. So all the raised areas will get recolored. Uh, and then once this is done, obviously this is going to get matte varnished, which is a shame. But not the end of the world because then when we've finished and we've done everything else and everything's glossed and you know we've got all the gold on we can go over these again with either the necron compound um, or some of the metallic paint we can either do an edge highlight we can do this again just to build back even more shade and what you'll have then is the dirty metal you'll have the the necron compound we brush on now which will then be matte and then you'll have more necron compound at the end which will be shiny and you'll get this proper contrast between shiny clean metal clean but not shiny metal and then dirty metal you'll get a whole like you'll get a triple effect so it's worth when you're doing metallics it's worth and i'm going off tangent here but it's worth planning in your order of build how you can do the metallics are you going to do it before a matte varnish after a matte varnish because what we'll do is once we've done all the weathering on this the the, the sort of paint chipping and stuff that isn't just dirt we're going to gloss varnish it put the decals on uh, although I'm, uh, I'm going to have to gloss varnish it first then put the decals on then We'll figure it out. I may just I may just put the decals actually on the paint because you can do that with the Citadel ones. They're pretty good. Uh, basically, we'll, we'll get all the paint chipping and stuff done that's not just dust and dirt. Get it gloss varnished. Uh, and then we'll do things like streaking and filters and other stuff and oil paints and things like that. And then when it's finished, if it needs it, it'll get a matte coat. Given the fact that some might want to buy this and play with it, we're going to give it a matte coat to protect it. But you might not need to if you weren't going to play with it. So it's worth planning into that process keep knocking this thing you know, just stay there it's worth planning into your process where you want to do different things you don't need to have a complete plan stuck in your mind i make things up as i go along but i do have a rough idea like i know i can do the metal the metals here and then the normal oil and then this dry brush and then there's all the stuff going to go on and then i can come back later and i restore the edges i may even go around the tips of the engines and things with some um graphite just to get an extra bit of bling but we'll see so anyway yes when you're doing things like metallics and stuff if your model's all matte and everything's matte and nothing's shiny it doesn't matter but if you want a mixture of shiny and matte you have to plan especially over like things like the golds keep that in mind anyway i'll go off i'll, I'll shut up now anyway because i'm really i'm just waffling it really is late i really do need more coffee i need to go to bed I'm tired man so tired um but i'll crack on with this and then we'll come back and see what we're up to and then that'll do us for an episode
Okay, and with the Necron compound now on, you can see it's made quite a difference. It's not made a massive difference, but remember, like I said, I'm not going the whole hog on these because I don't want it too clean and shiny because I know I'm going to be doing more stuff to the metallics later on after all the weathering's been done, like I said, so after it's all been matte varnished. So I probably will be doing more either Necron compound or something similar. So I don't need it to go too shiny right now. I want to build up a layer of different textures and colors. So now we've got some shiny silver parts, we've got some dark parts, and we've got bits where there's a hint of silver and a hint of dark. So it's that whole sort of varied tarnished metal effect. And it's just come out quite nicely. And this back thrusters is quite nice. I put a load on the edge so it goes all shiny. Uh, I've not done anything on these guns. Like I said, I'm gonna leave them till, till the very end because I've got a plan for those. Uh, and on these grav plates, they just look pretty good. I mean, they look dirty, which is fine. But I'm going to do more on these later, so I don't need to worry about it just now. Um, but in terms of stuff we can do, that's about it now before the actual sort of weathering process starts. I've got to actually sit and plan exactly how I'm going to do it. When do I need to do a gloss coat, a matte coat? I've got to get the decals on there at some point. I don't really want to do two gloss coats if I can avoid it. So I might see how what I can figure out. But that's about all I'll show you in this episode, because that's all the kind of painting done now, apart from all the stuff that has to come after the weathering. There's loads more painting to do, I just can't do it yet. Uh, one other thing as well, you may notice, I've been quite rough with this model as I'm handling it and working on it. I've been passing it from hand to hand, dropping it on the desk and scuffing it around and, you know, I've been doing that and moving it over. I've got my ring on and that's like, you know, clunking against it. And you know what? That's deliberate. Because I do weathered models and by rough handling a model, what you do is you actually introduce chippy. You actually introduce paint chips. You can see the primer underneath the black primer. And you know what? That's brilliant because that's doing some of the work for me. That's all I'm going to be doing when I paint the chipping on. But when I come to paint the chipping, I'll take that black chip there and I'll paint a little light blue line around it and it'll be a paint chip. So if you are doing a weather model and you're going to have lots of paint chipping, don't be afraid to manhandle it. To, to really, really, you know, like I keep knocking it and bashing it and I'm not fussed. The, the, the beauty of these Citadel paints is they are not the most durable paints in the world. Um, this is why you need all the varnishes. Ironically, for a tabletop game paint, they're not the most durable paints on their own, which is, you know, without a matte coat or a gloss coat on it, they're not going to take much abuse. Uh, most acrylic paints don't. That's the nature of acrylic paints. Lacquer like paints are tough as nails. Acrylic paints aren't that durable. So I'm quite happy to, you know, roughhouse it with it. So if you're doing a weathered chipped model, I'd recommend it because it will do some of the chipping for you. There are people that take their models and they put them in a bag or a box with something, lots of bits of you know, marbles or things or just things they can rattle around in the box with. Like some people do them and put little little pebbles and things in there and they very gently, they don't like you know, throw it around, but they very gently start shaking it about and it rattles around with the stuff in the box and it comes out chipped. So that's, some people actually do that to do paint chipping. You need a model that's quite tough and can take the abuse. Obviously you don't want it just to fall apart. So yeah, don't be afraid to manhandle your model if you're looking for, I can't stop doing this now. Yeah, let's just drop it. And I Don't be afraid to do that. It's done a little bit of work for me. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. That does kind of wrap things up for today. I say there's nothing really much more I can show you before the weather starts, so we'll leave it there. Um, I'm quite happy. Let me know about this lighting, see if this lighting is improved. I think it is. I think everything's a bit brighter now. Um, so I'm quite happy to keep using this little this little board as my work area when I'm filming. I'll probably still do stuff where I'm holding it up in front of the whiteboard when I'm doing bits of painting, but when this painting on this big thing now, I don't really want to hold it up. I can sit there and film while I'm painting on it. So yeah, but let me know what you think. If you think this lighting's better. The first few episodes of this series, they were quite dark and grim, but then again, it is the grim dark future of the 41st century. Yeah. In the grim dark future, there is only war. Yeah, I know that much about Warhammer. <laughs> yeah uh, but that's going to do it but thank you so much for watching as always uh, uh, do pop along to the model makers boom hut if you've never been there before here's the url go and join in it's a three and a half thousand almost group strong group of like-minded people who just like to shoot the breeze talk about models be a bit silly and there's no negativity in there we don't allow it so if you want a nice welcoming place to hang out talk about models and show off your work and get advice and hints and tips do so it's a big family everybody looks after each other and last of all don't forget of course if you really if you wish to you are more than welcome to support me on patreon there's the address patreon.com forward slash model making guru um i rely on the support my patreon supporters 
to keep me in business this is what i do for a living this this youtubes uh, and the social stuff this this is my this is my living so i do rely on you guys on the patrons who look after me brilliantly i do rely on them to keep me going and obviously i sell my bills as another source of income so if you'd like to help me keep me going keep me this channel running and keep me making content then do feel free to do if you wish um, to, wow sentence train wreck train wreck verbal diarrhea you can tell it's late i told you it was late coffee this is about my eighth cup of coffee it's not working somebody slipped me the wrong coffee so yes if you would like to help support this channel you are more than welcome to do so and i love you if you don't want to though that's absolutely fine as well i'll still love you and you'll still get content uh, but just so you know patrons do get every video 99 95 percent of videos you get them a week early on patreon and then they're released to everybody else so you get that and there's other perks as well go on go and have a look at the very least see what the benefits are anyway that's enough waffle i'm going to go away now because i really need to go to sleep or try and go to sleep although i've had eight cups of coffee so <laughs> yeah that's not happening that's not ever happening i'm going to be awake at like five in the morning and then i'll get to sleep about six and i'll wake up at like friday brilliant anyway take care of yourselves go make something awesome go be awesome and until next time yeah adios amoebas